Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondon. I'm the author of 11 published books, including Chakra Healing for Vibrant Energy, Exploring Your Seven Energy Centers with Mindfulness Yoga and Ayurveda, and Heal Yourself, A Return to Wholeness, The Integration of Body, Mind, Soul, and Spirit. All of my published books are available on Amazon. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications, and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. All right, here we are in a new phase of this YouTube channel that started back in May of 2024. We are getting deep, like really super deep. And because we're getting so deep, in the coming videos, starting with today, it actually started in May, but we're getting even deeper now. I have some mascots with me per usual. I've got my Grogu Tumblr with Ticino Dandelion Caramel Nut Tea. Per usual, when I'm doing my vlogs, and if you've seen vlogs, you know that I have this tea with me. I have two Gudetamas. So I was recently in Hawaii. I got the Hawaiian Gudetama. I have Grogu and I have the 10 year anniversary Gudetama. These help to keep me lighthearted and maybe help to keep you lighthearted as we dive deeper into these really, really deep topics. The deep topic we're exploring today towards self-realization is you are in this world, but you are not of this world. You are in this world, but not of this world. Now I looked up the expression, I first heard this probably with Wayne Dyer. I'm not 100% positive, but I looked it up and some say it's attributed to the Bible, John chapter 17, I think it's verse 16. But if you dive a little bit deeper into it, biblical scholars will tell you that that has nothing to do with the Bible, that wasn't the intention of the Bible. So we're not gonna say this is biblical. This is a spiritual statement and we're gonna dive deeply into it. You are in this world, but not of this world. And this is so important to the pathway to self-realization in any yogic circles, if you will. That is really what this is, is understanding you're in this world, but you're not of this world. I'm gonna give you a brief story. I was talking with someone last night and this person, this man was telling me about a book he was reading. I don't know the title of the book. I'm not quite sure. He talked about the sixth step of grief or something like that, I guess after Kubler-Ross's stages of grief. And I was asking him, why in particular was he reading this book? And he mentioned that his fiance passed away in 2019. And I was like, oh, hmm, that's interesting. And, you know, he explained that she died of a disease and he was trying to make sense of it. But that was five years ago. And then he said, well, my mother also passed away in 2009. And I'm thinking, hmm, 2009, okay, that was quite some time ago. And he said, you know, I believe she died prematurely, but I'm still trying to make sense of that one too. And it got me to thinking about all of these spiritual practices that I teach and the fact that we question our death date or anybody else's death date, right? We question it. We're like, why did this happen? This wasn't meant to happen. This person left too early or they should have stayed longer on the planet. They still had so much left to do. So we have a habit as humans to question a death date. Now, I'm not trying to make light of anyone's grief or anyone's death date, if you will. But when you really, really integrate into your being the fact that you're in this world, but you're not of this world, it changes your perspective completely. And in fact, I had that changed perspective back in 2003 when I discovered these teachings. And it was really prior to that that I discovered those teachings and I write a lot about that. But it wasn't until around the year 2003 that I totally understood it. I had been exposed for years to those teachings. It's just that I didn't quite grasp it on a first person level until around the date 2003. And when we think about it, we don't question our birth date, do we? Most of us, if not all of us, do not question the day we were born. We don't say, well, 
I was born in December, but you know what? I feel like I should have been born in October. And then you go to your mother and you ask her why and why did you birth me in December and I was supposed to be born in October and don't you know that? And now you're all upset. You're throwing your hands in the air in despair because of this. I don't know anyone that quite does that. I'm not sure if you do, but I don't know anyone who quite does that. But we all question our death date or somebody else's death date. We all say, oh, this shouldn't have happened. This is so sad. This is horrible. This is terrible. It shouldn't happen this way. And yet, when we're born into this world, shortly after we are born, very shortly after we are born, perhaps a year into being born, we know we're gonna die. We know that things are temporal on this earth plane. We really do know that because if you talk to a toddler, a little baby that has just started walking and they happen to squish an ant as they're walking and they point to it and they're like, oh, dead ant, right? If they have vocabulary, if they have words. <laughs> but they know that the ant was crawling and once they stepped on the ant, the ant was no longer crawling. And they usually have the concept of dead from a very, very, very early age. And so we know this, we know that we are born into this world, we're gonna die someday. Everybody has an expiration date, each and every one of us does. And yet we tend to fight it with everything we've got. We tend to try not to think about it, to ignore it, to turn the other way, to not look death in the face. And we remain in fear of this inevitability. And why do we usually remain in fear of this inevitability that we're born into this world to die from this world? We're just here for a parentheses in time. We're here for a very short duration. If it's 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, and perhaps 100 years or more, we're still here for such a brief amount of time. And when we cling on to the notion that I want this life never to end, this one right here, the one I'm in right now, this body, the one I'm in right now, I never want it to end, we're consistently lying to ourselves because we know we all have an expiration date. And so what's the other option there? What is the other option of ignoring it or denying it or wishing it away or wishing it wouldn't happen? The other choice you can make is understanding that you are in this world, but you're not of this world. And most people fear death because they don't know if there's anything in the beyond. Even the people that are really religious, even the people that have full faith or say they do. And in fact, they still fight death like it's the most horrible thing in, on earth or after earth. <laughs> and you know, even my own mother, like there are conversations I've had with her when she talks about death and she talks about other people's passings as if it were the absolute worst thing that could possibly ever happen. And she was, still is, I believe, very religious and really believes in God and heaven and the afterlife. And yet she remains in this state of fearing death, like, it's the absolute worst thing ever. So if you fully grasp from a first person level, just the way I grasped it from a first person level that I have this body, I am not the body. I have a body. What I am is a soul. And my soul has been in many bodies, many bodies because it's the soul that is unchanging. It is the soul that travels from the infinite consciousness to the here and now and going back to infinite consciousness. And so when I say that we are truly here for a parenthesis in time, we are truly here for just a short duration of time in this physical form, the physical form that you happen to be in, the physical form that I happen to be in, this is just a borrowed body with borrowed time. And death is not the end of you. And death is not the end of me. 
death is just a transition into the infinite consciousness where you came from. And when we really can grasp this first level, knowing that we are in the world, we're not of the world, and so death is no big deal, birth is no big deal. It's just like we've chosen this. This gentleman that I was speaking with yesterday about the death of his fiance and then the death of his mother and still grieving or still trying to make sense of it or still trying to understand it. And he said to me, like, I just don't understand. And I said, well, do you understand that when we come here, we're all going to die? Like, do you get He's like, yeah, I get that. But I just don't understand why that had to happen. And I'm like, OK, we don't know. Right. We don't know what we choose. Because as wise souls, which you are a wise soul, because you've traveled before into the human structure, into a human body, you are a wise soul. And in your infinite wisdom, you selected your experiences to help your soul to grow. And so when you came here, you selected your parents, you selected your family, you selected your culture, you selected the time frame in which you would be here. And you also orchestrated your exit strategy. You also orchestrated that one. And so because in your soul's wisdom, the wisdom of your soul, that you knew what was going on, then you shouldn't be so surprised. Now, we are surprised because our memories are limited. <laughs> when we take on a human body, when we take on a human personality, when we take on a human ego, we tend to forget. We forget where we came from and we forget who we are. And one of the reasons we forget where we came from and who we are is because we signed up to have this human experience. And the only way we could immerse ourselves fully into the human experience is to be fully human in the experience. And that's not to say that we aren't meant to discover that we are infinite, that our souls in their wisdom have chosen this parentheses in time. It's not to say that. It's just to say that the human impulse in a human body is stronger. It's stronger because you wanted, as a wise soul, you wanted to have this experience. And because you wanted so much to have this experience so your soul could evolve, you agreed to forget. So we come into this earth plane through our earthly mothers into this body, into this timeline for a very short duration of time. And we have certain things we agreed to do or things we agreed to learn or people we agreed to encounter and we agreed to forget the infinite nature of who we are. And then throughout the process of living life, you start to remember who you are. Now, some people will remember better than others. <laughs> some people who have traveled in many lifetimes through many bodies as a wise soul will tend to remember sooner rather than later. And some may not remember at all. And some may remember, then forget, then remember, then forget. <laughs> That's usually the most frequent phase is remembering and forgetting, remembering, forgetting, remembering, forgetting. But once you remember and you can maintain that remembering that you're in this world, but not of this world and that your soul chose this time and place and body because <laughs> you chose your body, too, by the way. You chose the color of your eyes, the color of your hair. You chose your body. You chose your parents. You chose your talents and abilities. You chose it all because as a wise soul, you said, through this body, I will learn certain things. And so since you remember as an enlightened person that you are, you remember now 
why you chose it all. Maybe you don't know the whole story because you're still here, still learning it. But once you remember that and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, I chose this. In this lifetime, I chose it. And guess what? I'm kind of excited about the rest of my life and I'm not too worried about my death date because I know my death date is just a reintegration into infinite consciousness where I feel so comfortable because that's where I came from. So I am infinite consciousness. I'm here as infinite consciousness. I'm going back to infinite consciousness. That is your steadiness. That is your stability. So when you realize that the constant, the thing that never changes is your soul, your wise, wise soul, as you realize that that is the thing that never changes, life becomes a lot less scary. Life becomes a lot less scary and so does death. Because death, you know, it's just a natural transition. It's just so natural. It's such a natural transition into where you came from. And so when you see someone that you love and you care for who has passed away, and you're in grief and you're very distraught about that situation, which we're human too, remember that. So it is a natural process to have emotions and feelings and sadness that is normal. But what's not normal is to hold on to that. That is not normal because in your infinite wisdom, as you know that that person has just joined infinite consciousness once again, where they came from, then you know that they're not gone. They didn't leave. They didn't go anywhere. That they're still right here in infinite consciousness. They may not be right here in a human body, but they're right here as the infinite wisdom of their soul. They are still here. And believe me, <laughs> I have had so many deceased family members visit me and talk to me as if, I were talking to you right here, right now, because they're still here. And if your tuner, if your station isn't tuned to the frequency of them being here, like if you're like, oh, they're gone, they're gone, they're never coming back, they're completely gone, then it's difficult for you to be tuned in to your deceased loved ones as far as like hearing them, feeling them, sensing them because they're still here. <laughs> they are still here. And it's their soul, their essence is still with you. And so when you realize that, it makes death so much easier and so much sweeter and better because you're like, that's kind of why we signed up to come here. It's to go back. We didn't sign up here to stay here. Now you may go back into another human body and say, I, I like this life. I kind of like living on earth. I want to sign up for this again. This is kind of fun. So as a wise soul, you can certainly sign up to do it again and again and again and again. <laughs> you can certainly do that. But remember that the here, the now, the earthly life is not the life. This is just so temporal. It's so temporary. And when you really grasp that, you tend to not take the things in life so gosh darn seriously. So when you see people get all up in arms about current events, for example, you as a wise soul that you are, tend to just laugh that off and go, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting that you would take that so seriously because, you know, we're just here for a short amount of time and you can have fun and you can play with life and you can be kind and compassionate and loving to others and be playful and joyful. But taking things really seriously is almost like, why would I even do that? And that doesn't mean you go around hurting people or that you do things to disrupt systems and things and earthly 
institutions, if you will, that doesn't mean that you do that because your soul from a soul level wouldn't do that anyway, because your soul level is unconditional love. Your soul level wouldn't do that anyway, but it's just that you don't take things so personal. You don't take things so seriously. You're just like, all right, if that person wants to get up in arms about this issue or that issue or this traffic situation, so be it. But I really don't need to. I don't need to get up in arms about such things because it just doesn't even matter in the grand scheme of things. Wouldn't it be so much better to go about your life and go, well, okay, that thing might be annoying or it might not be what I wanted, but let's go have fun. Let's go do something. Let's go create something instead. So I hope this was helpful in starting to get you into the mindset and the perspective of higher consciousness, because that is all what self-realization is all about, is really connecting to your higher consciousness and the best way, the best, best way you can practice this, you can practice remembering is through the practice of meditation. And I teach meditation in case you didn't know. So I'm doing three new formats. One, I have my online formats, always there, always there, always there. The link is in the info box below. I'm going to be doing my online meditation course with Zoom sessions next month in October. And then if you live in Southern California, I will be doing in-person classes once again. I started out doing that in 2009 and did it to 2018. And here I am now doing it again. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others who could use a little help with their own personal power, self-realization and self-actualization. And I will see you in the next video.